Hello again, my name's John. I'm a retired cook from the northeast of England in the UK and welcome to my latest video recipe. And in this one, I'll be using my easy hot water crust pastry method to make these amazing minced or ground beef pies. I was practically brought up on these. They're quick, simple and absolutely delicious. You can view the ingredients list and full written method for this recipe on the recipe page on the channel's website. I'll leave a link in the description under the video or you can click on the eye icon top right of the screen to take you directly to the recipe page. And I'd like to thank the Patreon and PayPal supporters for their very kind help. I'll be doing the shout out and name splash a little later in the video. OK, let's get on with today's recipe. Right, I'll start the recipe by heating up the oil in a medium sized pot. Now you can use any oil, olive, sunflower, vegetable, whatever you've got. Once the oil's hot, add your diced onions and fry until soft. Next, add your minced or ground beef. Try to use a low fat one. Mine's only 5% fat, ideal for this recipe. Now chop it up with your wooden spatula and cook until it's all broken up and has plenty of colour. Now add your 200 ml or grams of beef stock. If you don't have natural beef stock, just use a beef stock cube and that's all I'm using. And because I'm using a beef stock cube in mine and I'll be thickening it with gravy granules, there's no need to add salt. Next add one large or two small bay leaves. Finally add one tablespoon of tomato puree and thoroughly mix that in. And this tomato puree or paste gives the filling a deep rich flavour. Now bring that to a slow boil. Now put the lid on, turn the heat right down and simmer for 10 minutes. Right, while the meat's cooking, I'll move on to making the pastry. Pour the water into a small pan and bring it to a simmer. Now add the salt to the flour. Place the butter and fat into the hot water and stir until it melts. Make a well in the flour and add the hot liquid. Using my trusty wooden spoon handle, I'll bring it all together. Once it's all together, scrape down the sides of the bowl. Now tip the dough onto a floured surface and fold it all together into a smooth ball. Your dough should now be cool enough to handle, but always check first. Try not to over mix at this stage. If you overwork pastry, it can become a little tough when cooked. Incidentally, this is exactly how you make pastry for your traditional pork pies. I do have a two-part video on how to make pork pies. I'll leave links in the description box below the video if you're interested in making those. Wrap it in cling film or a plastic bag and get it into the fridge. It's way too soft to use at the moment. It'll need to be in the fridge for at least an hour before using it. And this hot water crust pastry can be made well in advance, even the day before. Right, back to the mince or ground beef. Once the 10 minutes are up, add a couple of tablespoons of gravy granules. 
If you used natural beef stock, you can thicken yours with corn flour or potato starch. Not only do these gravy granules add flavour, they also thicken the filling, which is why I only used one stock cube, because you don't want to make this too rich. OK, two spoons of these gravy granules have thickened the mince just right for me. So I'll get the lid on, turn off the heat and allow it to completely cool before using it. Now this, like the pastry, can be made well in advance, so all we have to do now is let it cool before putting these pies together. And the best way to cool this down quickly is to place the pan and float it in a dish of cold water. While that's cooling, I can start rolling and cutting the pastry. So, place your now chilled dough onto a floured surface. If your dough is still a little hard from the fridge, just squeeze and manipulate it for a couple of moments until it's soft enough to roll. And now, sprinkle a little flour on the pastry. Now, lots of viewers have mentioned in the comments that they're having great trouble rolling pastry out evenly. But this special high quality stainless steel rolling pin is the answer. The rolling pin makes you roll the dough out to a precise thickness, perfectly and consistently. It has different size spaces on each end, varying from thick to very thin, so it's virtually impossible to get it wrong. I'm so impressed with these pins that I've added them to the website shop. And like the caption says, this is ideal for novices or professional bakers alike. And for these pies, I'm using the 1 8 or 3 mm spacer. And all I have to do now is keep rolling until the fitted spacer hits the bench. It's impossible to go too far. Absolutely brilliant product. Now these are the little pie tins I'll be using. So you'll need something to cut the right size circles for the bases to fit these tins. And this plastic dessert dish is the ideal size for the bases for these tins. Obviously you need to cut yours to whatever size tins that you're using. I'll leave a link in the description to my affiliate UK Amazon page for these tins. And they do come in a set of six. And indeed, this recipe is enough to make six of these pies using these tins. But for the video, I'll just be showing you how to make four. I'll make my other two off camera. Now roll out the pastry for the lids. And the ideal size for the lids is the actual pie tin that you're using. Right, everything is cut, so I'll have a bit of a clean up and when I come back, I'll start assembling these delicious pies. Before going any further, preheat your oven to 170 degrees Celsius, that's 340 Fahrenheit, or gas mark 3. And before I put these pies together, I'll prepare the egg wash. For the egg wash, crack a small egg into a suitable container and add a dash of milk and whisk thoroughly until it's nice and smooth and runny. OK, I'll set that aside for now. OK, time to put these beauties together. I'll show you how to do one from start to finish. Place one of the base pastries over the top of your greased tin, making sure it's centralised. Now gently press it down all the way to the bottom corners. Make sure you don't have any air pockets in the bottom. And for those girls and guys who have long fashionable nails, use a little piece of folded pastry to push it right down into the corners where the base meets the sides of the tin. Now make sure you have a lip of pastry all around the edge of the tin. OK, time to put these beauties together. I've transferred the now cold filling to a bowl just to make it easier to film. Now carefully spoon your filling into the pastry case and fill it right up to the rim. Don't overfill because it does expand some in the oven and you don't want it to burst out. Now 
Now brush egg wash all around the rim of the pastry. Try not to get any on the actual tin or it will stick in the oven. Time to put the lids on. Now brush egg wash all around the edge of the lid. Place it on the base and gently press it down. Right, nothing too difficult so far. Now crimp both pastries together as shown, using your forefingers and thumbs. This takes a little practice but you soon pick it up. And that's the first one done. Once they're all done, get them onto the baking tray. I like to use this pizza tray for pies as it allows the heat through the perforations. Now cut a couple of vent holes in the middle of each pie. Brush egg wash all over and once again try not to get any on the actual tin. Make sure all the vents are clear of egg wash. Once that's done, get them into the preheated oven. Unfortunately, it's a bit dark in my oven today as the bulb is blown and I can't find my spare bulbs anywhere. Now set your timer for 40 minutes. And at this point, I hope you don't mind if I give my three recipe books a bit of a plug. The books have lots of our favourite recipes from our work kitchens in them. All three books are available in the website shop along with lots of other equipment I use in the videos. And by popular demand, the skeleton style oven gloves are now available too. Just click on the eye icon top right of your screen and that will take you to the website shop where all of these items are available now. Okay, time's up and they're looking fantastic. And the aroma in my kitchen at the moment is amazing. And as you can see, they're a wonderful golden brown, just the way they should be. And it's tempting to get stuck in straight away, but these are way too hot to use immediately. So I let them rest and cool a little for five minutes. And when I come back, I'll give these a try. And I'll show you how we serve these to our customers. Okay, I've waited long enough and it's time to give these beauties a try. Providing you didn't get egg wash all over the place, they should pop straight out of the tin. And as you can see, the bottom of the pie is well cooked. Right, with a good sharp serrated knife, I'll attempt to make a clean cut through the pie and try to get a good shot with my little gimbal camera bottom right of your screen. And isn't that a fantastic shot? And what a delicious looking filling. It looks so appetising. Out of all the pie recipes on my channel, this has got to be the easiest and most delicious pie recipe I have. The filling is flavourful, tender and the pastry has a crisp outer shell and a tasty soft light texture on the inside. What's not to like? And this is how we serve these in our work kitchens. Sometimes with mashed potato and peas, but in this case, chips, peas and lots of lovely gravy. Hope you give these a go and I'm sure you and your family will give them a massive thumbs up. And as promised at the beginning, here is the latest list of my Patreon and PayPal supporters. And they are David Tuvey, Oliver Eikoff, Karen Wells, Christopher Hero, Janet Rempel, Alice Casper and June Willox. And there's also three who wish to remain anonymous. Thanks very much guys. I really do appreciate all that you do in supporting the channel. 
Well, thank you again for watching. Please like, share, comment and subscribe by hitting the circle above. If you do subscribe, activate the bell icon next to the subscribe button on my channel page. And by doing that, you'll be automatically notified every time I upload a new video. And in the meantime, here's a few of my other videos and playlists that you may want to watch. So, until the next time, be safe in your kitchen and bye for now.